Did you know some animals may hold the key to immortality? Yeah, really. Don't know what we're chatting about? Strap in. These 20 animals can live after death. Number 20. Snakes. Generally speaking, an animal's death means, well, death. Once you're gone, there's very little chance that you're gonna be able to come back and make a triumphant last stand, unless you're a snake, in which case, well, you still can't. But you can wiggle. We know that snakes, when dead, have a tendency to retain their reflexes. It's honestly weird, but hey, it's 2020. Weirdness is, uh, it's a way of life. But a rattlesnake is particularly dangerous. One Texas man was doing ordinary yard work when he happened to spot a four-foot rattlesnake. Naturally, he did something that many snake lovers are about to get very angry about. He decapitated it with a shovel, but rest assured, my serpent, uh, uh sorcerers. Eh. Anyway, the guy went to dispose of the severed head, but it bit him. Yeah, the severed head actually bit him, and it got a good bite in too. The guy apparently received a massive dose of the venom, leaving him seriously ill. When he was airlifted to hospital, he received a huge amount of anti-venom, which eventually got him into a stable and safe condition, but you can bet that he won't go around beheading snakes again anytime soon. Just stick to your yard work and leave the snakes to the sorcerers. Look, I'm committing to it. It might be the next big trend. Who knows? Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the juicy topic. We've heard the phrase, running around like a headless chicken. That phrase exists because after being decapitated, chickens can still run around and sort of live for a little bit. Did you know this can happen with camels as well? Or at least it happened once. The camel in the photo sadly lost its head, but remained standing for several minutes. Very peculiar. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag juicy topic. Number 19, Keratopsis dormi. Jellyfish. They're weird and they're slimy and none of us really trust them because they look like a plastic bag that's mutated. All very reasonable complaints, I must say. But there's one jellyfish that may be worthy of your praise and interest. Meet the Turritopsis dorni, one of the only species on the planet that can go back in time. In the 1880s, Turritopsis dorni was discovered for the first time in the Mediterranean Sea. At the time, it was highlighted as a uniquely enduring organism, which is a very fancy way of saying it can somehow survive, even when survival seems pretty much impossible possible or improbable. That's a feat. You see, when the Turritopsis dorni is faced with some kind of life-threatening danger, they take a leap back in their developmental process, becoming a young polyp. That process has led to the jellyfish's unofficial name, the Immortal Jellyfish. The jellyfish can literally never be killed. Whenever it's faced with death, it'll just go back to its junior phase of life and start all over again. And be honest with me, who among us would not love to do that? I mean, I've been 21 for maybe six years at this point. Number 18, Tardigrade. The tardigrade will be especially familiar to two groups of people, whom I believe make up the entire population, fans of Marvel movies and people who live their lives looking through microscopes. This is the micro-animal, also known as the water bear. It's not as cute as it sounds, eh, unless you think weird subatomic animals are cute, in which case, enjoy. The tardigrade is an eight-legged segmented micro-animal, first discovered in 1773. They've been found in Earth's biosphere in just about every location and condition, from mountaintops to the deep sea, tropical rainforests to the Antarctic. According to studies, 
They're among the most resilient animals on Earth, built to survive extreme conditions of all kinds. We're talking extreme temperature, extreme pressure, radiation, dehydration, starvation, anything that could feasibly kill any other species on the planet, the tardigrade can and will survive it. On the other side of things, humans die if the aircon is a little too high. We're not equipped for this. Obviously, the tardigrade is an animal that we don't really see, but it's nice to know that the little guy is going to outlive humanity. That's a comforting thought. Not sure Ant-Man will make it through the inevitable nuclear fallout, but good for the water bear. Number 17. Siberian Worms I'm pretty sure that all of us have, at some point, experienced the total disorientation that comes when you're woken from a nap. That sudden confusion, attempting to figure out what's real and what isn't, it can be a lot to take in. Now imagine what you'd be like if you woke up after 42,000 years. As climate change continues to affect our planet, Siberia is becoming a particularly concerning area of the world. The melting permafrost Frost is releasing a whole bunch of nematodes. These worm-like creatures have been blissfully sleeping inside the ice since the Pleistocene era. Even though they've been encased in ice for tens of thousands of years, the creatures came back to life as if nothing ever happened. So, hey, that's good news for all you Captain America fans, right? Scientists aren't all that surprised by the news. Even though they're only around one millimeter long, they've been known to live deeper below the surface than any other multicellular animal. They've adapted to some of the most unthinkable conditions learning to eat new foods, cope with radical or extreme temperatures, and even develop new biological functions. Again, humans can barely decide on which streaming service is best. We are not equipped for the end times. Number 16. The Lungfish it's a common misconception that fish can't breathe outside of the water. Actually, it's not. That's very much true. But there are exceptions to every rule, and this one also has an exception. It comes in the form of the lungfish, a species named for... Oh man, come on, you can figure it out! Thanks to a highly evolved respiratory system, the lungfish is a fish that can actually take oxygen straight from the air, just like land animals. These freshwater fish can live on land without water for months, sometimes even years, and according to studies, some species are so conditioned to breathing air that they slowly lose the use of their gills as they approach adulthood. Because who needs them when you can just suck in that delicious, slightly polluted air. Mmm, air pollution, delicious. Of course, the fish continue to live in the water because, well, they're fish, but the irony is that they can't spend their whole lives underwater. In fact, if they don't regularly come to the surface for air, these fish will drown. Yeah, the fish can't survive out of the water, but it can't survive in the water. Talk about irony. Number 15, Bark Scorpion. Good news for those of you who live in freezing or extremely hot conditions. You're unlikely to bump into a bark scorpion, but for those of us who live in mild or average climates, might want to keep your shoes on. Although honestly, they should be on all the time anyway. Who knows what's lurking on that floor? The bark scorpion tends to prefer habitats in which the temperature remains between 11 and 40 degrees Celsius, or 52 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. But they're also known to survive more extreme temperatures, such as below freezing and scorching desert heat. And that's not really what we're focusing on today. You really want to know how the heck they're able to sting after death? It's a great question. Well, some people have discovered an answer. Unfortunately, they discovered that answer the hard way. When the black scorpion dies, its tail will stretch out straight behind their bodies. If you happen to step on that, you better expect a pretty sharp and unexpected shock. That jerk will 100% sting you, and it won't feel bad about it whatsoever. You know, because it's dead. Actually, I don't know, maybe they feel bad about it in the afterlife? Who am I to make blanket assumptions about death in the scorpion world? Number 14. Squid 
Here's a slightly off-putting sight to have on your dinner table. I'm not talking about the squid, of course. I'm sure the squid is cooked to absolute perfection. No, I'm talking about the weird Frankenstein-type dance that the very dead squid is doing. That's, uh, that's weird. When the video was first posted to Reddit in 2013, the internet expressed serious concern about whatever the heck this restaurant was doing. I mean, wouldn't you be? But as it turns out, the restaurant had nothing to do with this bizarre sight, because while it may look like the squid is still alive, it's not. It's just that when you spray it with soy sauce, the squid kickstarts into a scientific behavior known as action potential. That is defined as a rapid rapid rise and subsequent fall in voltage of membrane potential across a cellular membrane with a characteristic pattern. Or to put it another way, soy sauce makes a dead squid dance. So while the internet went wild debating whether or not it was ethical to plate up a squid that seemed to still be living, there was no point. This is an example of an animal that died, but its body somehow still has some chemical processes going on. Fascinating. Number 13. Snapping Turtle Look, turtles and tortoises, we know that these guys are close to indestructible. We're talking about animals that have somehow been able to survive for hundreds if not thousands of years, but there's something especially impressive about any animal that can somehow remain alive and well after losing their heads. In the case of snapping turtles, these animals can continue to live and breathe for seemingly hours after certain death. In this case, death could be decapitation or the removal of their heart, and yet that is just not enough to stop the snapping turtle from, well, uh, snapping. In fact, they seem to be kind of immortal. Even with the heart fully removed from their body, it will continue to beat for around five hours. And as for the head, you remove that and it will continue to bite. It's just a flesh wound, right? I guess all of this makes sense, given that the snapping turtle is a fighter. Even if they only have their heads left, they will continue to fight back and defend themselves no matter what. But I think I speak for all of us when I say that being able to fight without a body is... Well, I don't want to mess with any animal that can do that. No thank you. Number 12. Cockroaches it's an old cliché that the cockroach will outlive pretty much every other animal on the planet, but it's a true one. There's basically nothing that can kill these guys. It would be very impressive if we didn't find them so unsettling and gross to look at, that is. Thanks to their uniquely open circulatory system, as well as their ability to breathe through tiny holes in their body segments, the cockroach is not dependent on the mouth or head to breathe at all. In theory, you could decapitate a cockroach and it would not make any difference. In fact, the only reason that the roach would die is from the inability to drink water. Yeah, decapitation would have no effect, but take away the roach's ability to drink and you give it a real problem, so maybe an apocalypse would kill them in the end. Interesting. Increasingly enough, there's another way that cockroaches could escape certain death. If, for whatever reason, the cockroach found itself buried underwater. Let's say that there was some kind of grand flood, for instance. The cockroach would just hold its breath, and as long as it could escape the water within 40 minutes, it would be just fine. So they can't survive anything, just almost everything. Number 11. Praying Mantis if you're looking for a species where the male really doesn't have it easy, you don't have to look much farther than the praying mantis. Some species of animal expect the male to give birth or to provide for the family or whatever, but the male praying mantis, they actually get eaten during mating. Ouch. But here's the weird thing. It doesn't kill them. Well, it does, but it doesn't. Yeah, the praying mantis does have the same inherent need as many other species. They have to mate. And the female has to consume her mate in order to have enough energy to incubate the fertilized eggs. 
However, sometimes they get so hungry that they'll just eat the male's head halfway through. And when that happens, the male doesn't let it go to him. He just continues doing what he's doing. Well, hey, I guess if that's your last moments on Earth, there are worse things to be doing. I guess this is one of those classic examples of how weird nature can be. Well, it's weird to us. I guess if a praying mantis could speak, they'd be more confused about how we're not killing our partners mid-mating. I, for one, am glad we're not doing that, but I may be biased. Number 10. Frog a New York winter is not a pleasant experience, let me tell ya. But if it's bad for us humans, just imagine how excruciatingly miserable it is for the frogs. Yeah, the frogs, specifically wood frogs. Winter to them is basically a process of death and then not death. During the winter months, wood frogs native to the Finger Lakes region end up frozen solid. But by the time the spring rolls around and the snow and ice melt away, those frogs thaw out and get on with their existence. According to scientists, they manage to escape the deadly side effects by producing a kind of natural antifreeze, preventing their cells from icing over. And that's how you survive being frozen solid for months? Now that we've said it out loud, it just seems so easy, right? Not sure why we never thought of that. And for those of you wondering how these frogs manage to stay somewhat conscious for those months on end, well, they're basically dead in everything but name. No heartbeat, no brain activity, they are essentially dead to the world. Until spring and then everything is all good. Kinda sounds like me in non-COVID times. And also in COVID times. Hey, I like to hibernate, what can I say? Number 9. Flatworms Children can be cruel and sick and twisted. I'm sorry to say that, but I think you all know it's absolutely true. Where else will you find a group of people more than willing to mutilate and behead an innocent, unthinking worm? Oh, right. Scientists. Fair point. Actually, though, it turns out that worms may not actually suffer under the sadistic might of the young and or a grown scientist, because flatworms in particular have a fascinating ability to survive even the most unsurvivable incidents. You can cut a googly-eyed flatworm into four separate pieces, and the little guy will just continue as normal. In fact, each of those four pieces that you have just created will grow into all new and fully grown flatworms. Yeah, we're talking about animals that can regenerate entire parts of their body here, truly live in the dream, which may explain why scientists are so eager and happy to cut them into pieces. Scientists worldwide are attempting to understand how these flatworms can use incredibly stem cells to regenerate their bodies. They believe that if they can just figure out how it works, using this kind of tool on humans could be game-changing. Imagine you lose an arm, but you get to grow an entirely new one. That, my friends, is the future. Assuming, you know, people don't start cutting them off for fun. Number 8. Fruit Flies Nobody likes flies. I mean, come on, you're just trying to enjoy your life. Maybe you're eating something, and you're being relentlessly kamikaze by flies. Absolutely not. But here's a depressing fact for you. Fruit flies are almost immortal. I apologize to anybody attempting to enjoy a picnic while watching. In fact, we're going to zero in on the female fruit fly and focus on a more unique circumstance. Because, as it turns out, if you happen to somehow cut off the head of a female fruit fly, not only will it continue to live, it will sing like a male. Yeah, apparently the fruit fly operates on a system that's more or less unisex, except for a few nodes that seem to be set to male or female. So when the head gets cut off, the headless, singing female continues to fly, creating a male mating song. It's interesting. Researchers have taken in this as a sign that the male and female fruit flies are a lot closer than previously thought. Now, I'm not exactly sure what they could do with this information, but hey, good for them for figuring it out. Truly doing the Lord's most game-changing work here. Number 7. Octopus 
Alright, so we know that a squid will start dancing around if you pour some soy sauce on it. But now we turn our attention to the squid's most familiar relative, the octopus. And we have to ask a very important question of this animal. Why do they still move after they're dead? Much like that squid we saw earlier, octopi have a habit of moving around after they're dead. And that understandably leads many people to suspect that they're not actually dead. Maybe they're faking it. No, my friends, nobody fakes death. Well, except for con artists and reality stars, but they're more or less the same thing. In the case of the octopi, if you were to cut off one of their arms, you would see that it continues to twist and contort. That's because each arm has its own brain. When the arm is severed, the brain is still a part of it and continues to twist and contort. For the octopus, that severed arm turns out to be a blessing in disguise. The predator will instantly zero in on the wriggling arm, allowing just enough time for the old slinky arms to swim off into the night. However, if the main brain of the octopus is killed, that arm will also be killed. It's a pretty fascinating thing. It's basically like Wi-Fi. Number 6. Hydra Hail Hydra, they shouted. Well, we're not talking about the Marvel Conspiracy Group today, although they operate in the same way, all things considered. We're talking about the real thing, the real-life Hydra that seems to be entirely unkillable. It's actually kind of terrifying. Much like the fictional Hydra we all know and some of us love, the Hydra has a unique and kind of terrifying genetic ability. If you cut off a head and foot from the Hydra body, a new head and foot will regenerate in exactly the same location. It's a genetic combination of pieces of tissue and dissociated single cells that come together to form entirely new parts of the body. And I think I speak for everyone when I say that generating new parts of the body is absolutely something that would be very helpful. Who needs to pay for transplants in that world? Unlike the Marvel Hydra, this has absolutely nothing to do with a government conspiracy. It's just a very very strange and unique animal living out in the world. So you'll never see Captain America punching a Hydra group in the face. And that's good, but also, we should be pretty impressed by how they can completely reinvent their own bodies. Some people have to pay their plastic surgeons a fortune for that. Number 5. Axolotl so we've been talking a lot about animals that are able to survive death by forming entirely new body parts. Here's another one, the axolotl. These salamanders are easily among the cutest of the Earth's amphibians, but they're also the smartest and most productive. And by productive, I'm obviously talking about their limbs. Don't be fooled by the cute appearance, however. Yes, they may look appealing, but these are cannibals we're talking about. When these animals happen to be surrounded by other axolotls, it's not uncommon to see them almost constantly devouring one another, and that dangerous childhood is what presumably allowed them to evolve the ability that has now made them almost unkillable. Regenerative limbs. If an axolotl happens to lose a limb, that lost appendage will grow back at exactly the right size and orientation. In a matter of weeks, the seam between the old body and the new limb disappears completely, making it impossible to tell. Great work, eh? The axolotl's talents go beyond just regenerating limbs. It can also regenerate ovary and lung tissue, parts of the brain, and even a spinal cord. I mean, if only we could do that. Imagine how much stress we'd miss out on. And we could help people get a brain. Amazing. Number 4. Chicken. You remember the old phrase, right? Running around like a headless chicken? Usually that's referenced to imply that your subject is useless or otherwise panicked and chaotic about something. Well, now we have the exception that proves this may not represent all headless chickens. Meet Mike, or should I say Miracle Mike, a literal headless chicken. Yeah, he's active, or he was. Mike's owner had taken him out to the back for slaughter, hoping to put a chicken dinner on the table for his family. Unfortunately, he made a pretty grave error. While he did successfully cut the head off the chicken, 
he missed the jugular vein, so the chicken did not die. In fact, Miracle Mike somehow managed to live for another 18 months. He was eye dropped a mixture of milk and water, somehow going on about his business until he choked on a kernel of corn and died. It's kind of wild that any animal could live for a full 18 months without its brain. Then again, we as humans have witnessed people live in years, decades even, in high pressure jobs with no brains. So I guess all things considered, Miracle Mike probably isn't all that impressive. I don't know. Number 3. Wolf Eel Like many other animals before it, the wolf eel doesn't appreciate the experience of being decapitated. However, it doesn't really let the lack of a head get in the way. Not at all, in fact. It's just as dangerous without a head as with one. The wolf eel, which isn't an eel at all, by the way, but a wolffish, is not poisonous, nor is it venomous. But that doesn't mean that it's not an incredibly dangerous animal in its own right. This is a fish that is known to bite, and that remains the case even after the animal is dead and decapitated. If you were to decapitate a wolf eel, you'd witness a few post-mortem muscle spasms, which are, as always, kind of terrifying to behold. But if you were the kind of fool to put your hand in a dead fish's mouth, you'd find it would still be very happy to bite you. And I mean, you kind of had it coming, but that's another thing. According to experts, the cause of the bite comes from the touch receptors. When your finger touches one of these receptors, it triggers a central pattern generator within the fish, causing the jaws to instinctively close. It's not a fun time for anybody, but again, you kind of had it coming. Number 2. Lobsters it kind of feels like we've covered most of the animals in the ocean at this point, and now it's time to cover another one, the lobster. Everybody knows most of the facts about the lobster, their one partner mating policy, their entrepreneurial streak that led them to found the Red Lobster restaurant. But few people know about their ability to seemingly stay young forever. While other animals are busy regenerating limbs and forming new body parts, the lobster focuses more on something familiar to any human, aging. Nobody wants to get old, and lobsters somehow have found a way to opt out of something we all thought was a certainty. While most animals are unable to constantly copy and divide their cells, the lobster has a never-ending supply of an enzyme called telomerase. That enzyme allows them to produce more and more of the protective end cap on chromosomes, which is what prevents cells from duplicating and allows most species to age. This is what allows the lobster to survive for an absurdly long time, but it does come with a catch. Much like abusing steroids, there comes the point at which the lobster will grow too big for its own shell. And since the shell can't be expanded or change in size, they have to abandon it and find a new exoskeleton. The exhaustion that comes from constantly finding new bodies, that's the number one cause of death in lobsters. Well, except for, you know, dinner. Number 1. B. Ah, our old buddy the bee. Look, I know many people find them annoying or they just don't like them, but let's take a look at it another way. They're not wasps, and for that, we all have to be very, very thankful. Obviously, one of the things everybody knows about the bee is that it will only sting when absolutely necessary. If it perceives a threat to the hive, you may well end up with a sting. But that's rare, and of course, it leads to the inevitable death of the bee. But here's a twist. It turns out that when the bee stings you, it doesn't die right away. No, there's a little bit of time before the sting and the death. Once the bee has stung you, it can't retract the stinger. When it pulls away, the stinger is ripped from the body, along with the digestive tract, muscles, and nerves. That rupture kills the bee. However, even after the bee is swatted away, the nerve cells attached to the stinger continue to pump its venom into your wound. That happens even if the bee is dead and gone. Hey, even in death, they're hard workers, you have to give them that. Have you ever seen an animal moving around after dying? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.